Yeah, welcome everyone. Um, it's great to see um, lots of people tuning in uh, to the online session of the conference. Um, and today I'm going to be talking all about bringing environmental data to life uh, using Power BI. Um, so for those of you who I haven't met, my name's Alice. I'm co-founder of Discover AI, um, and I'm an MVP based in uh, Melbourne, Australia. And I'm really passionate about all things to do with environment, design, and uh, really Power BI. Um, but what brings me here today, I don't have a background in uh, computer programming or even data management. I'm actually an environmental engineer um, by training and I previously specialized in water resource management. And what I did a lot of was spend most of my time living in Excel land <laughs> with massive spreadsheets, big fan of macros, um, but I also did a lot of uh, modeling and spatial analysis as well, really to create um, water resource strategies, which would end up in a series of very lengthy static uh, PDF report documents. Um, which don't really uh, kind of lend themselves to supporting decision making. So you could just imagine how confused people would be with these massive reports, trying to sift their way through um, and pick out a handful of numbers to base their results off. And when I discovered Power BI, I remember I was literally blown away. Um, for me, I really saw the power in converting those really lengthy static PDF reports into more online interactive um, dashboards using Power BI to present um, almost an entire project's worth of information on a couple of pages. Um, but I soon learned it's simply not enough just to present the information on the page. Um, you really have to bring this data to life. Um, so that's something I'm really passionate about. Power BI is amazing. It has some really rich data visualization. Um, capabilities. Um, so that's what I'm going to be chatting about today. Um, but just before we dive in, I always like to take a step back and think, uh, what is good design in Power BI? Um, this is very uh, kind of um, uh, up to the end user what they think, but I think that it's a lot of little things together done right. So things like thinking about how you can tell your data story, uh, thinking about navigation, are you answering business questions, uh, visual communication, so use of images, icons, videos, um, consistent use of layout, color, and themes to really um, provide that familiarity with your corporate brand and uh, give your data trust as well. Thinking about how you're laying out your visuals on the page? Are we using a, a background? Are we um, following different conventions? Um, thinking about interactions and visuals and dynamic data as well. And um, we work with a lot of people who love the data. Um, so Power BI, it's an amazing uh, data processing tool. We spend probably 80% of our time on projects working in kind of data land, <laughs> we, uh, transforming, uh, modeling, calculating using DAX. Um, but often the design is left until the end and um, kind of a little uh, piecemeal. We just put the visuals together on the page, uh, try to get it done really quickly. Um, but I think that design is a really key component of, um, of your Power BI experience because otherwise, uh, all that hard work that you've invested into getting the data right, it might be lost if people don't understand or know how to interpret the info that you're presenting. So where should you start? So I'm going to take you through um, a couple of real world examples um, uh, which we've worked on uh, at Discovery AI. These are public uh, reports, um, so I can share the links in the chat if anyone is keen to go online and um, uh, click through while we're chatting about the different features. Um, but really I want to showcase four different reports, um, all focused around environmental data, and then pull out the different uh, Power BI design tips and tricks and do a couple of demos as well. Um, so this, I want this to be as interactive as possible. It's kind of hard when we're not physically together in a room, um, but please at any time, if you have any questions right in the chat, feel free to go off mute. Um, and um, yeah, we can, we can, I love going off script <laughs> as well. 
Um, so this short video, it's uh, we'll just press play on this. This just provides an overview of um, this uh, four different reports, uh, which we'll go through today. Um, so you can see uh, this one is um, a report we made uh, analyzing survey data for the Great Barrier Reef. Um, this one is a urban water strategy for the Greater Melbourne area. Um, so it's a lot of kind of text um, and visuals in this in this report. Uh, this one's a water management strategy for uh, Gippsland Water, which is a um, regional water corp in uh, Melbourne. And it's got lots of infographics. Um, and again, this one is a, um, the Victorian water grid. Uh, so this is a report showcasing uh, the different um, water kind of supply and different challenges uh, facing Victoria, but they're all made in Power BI. Um, so let's dive in. Let's start by taking a look at um, each of these reports um, in a little bit more detail and um, highlighting the different design tips and tricks. So the first report which I wanted to dive in today is the Victorian Water Grid. Um, and this consists of five Power BI reports. Um, and its objective really was to communicate the status of Victoria's current water resources across different water users and identifying challenges and opportunities for the future. Um, so this report has a couple of design tips which I'll point out um, as we take a look. So let's go and have a look. Um, I'll just copy this link into the chat in case anyone is um, keen to have a look at the same time. And if we scroll through, we can see that we've got five Power BI dashboards embedded. Um, we're using Power BI published to web in all of these examples, uh, not Power BI embedded. Um, and uh, the first one I'll show you here is um, here we've got um, an infographic of Victoria's water grid, which is our network of uh, rivers, pipes, pumps, reservoirs to really distribute water across the state. Um, but because we're uh, targeting um, kind of non-technical audiences and this is a public facing report, this is where things like using infographics and images can go a long way to really trying to very quickly um, kind of upskill people in, in what this data is. So here, this is a Power BI uh, report and we're using a custom visual here called Synoptic Panel, uh, which allows us to make interactive infographics. So we can click on the different areas of this visual and we're using dynamic text here um, to uh, bring up a little bit more information about, about these different features as well. Um, so another design tip which I'll point out here is just thinking about branding and consistent kind of colours and layouts. Um, so we're using Power BI backgrounds here and themes, so I'll do a quick demo of this in a minute, um, to really frame the reports, um, but think about when you're designing sort of any kind of app experience, aligning the colour choices that you select with the corporate brand guide of uh, either your company or your end client um, who you're designing it for. So you can see it's got a very consistent look and feel with the overall website as well. Um, so we've got lots of different reports here. Now uh, you can take a look, um, different kind of urban supply, uh, irrigation supply. Um, but one of my favourite ones here, which I'll show you now, is having a look at the environmental uh, water resources. Um, so we can see that we're using a lot of images and icons here, again, to try to really quickly create um, that kind of shared understanding of what the data is that we're reviewing and really trying to think, how can we bring this data to life? So we're not just... Um, uh, showing a list of our different environmental assets. Uh, we can click on these different assets uh, using icons from the icon map. Um, we can hover over it and have a look at um, a short list of the different environmental features that they're trying to protect. Um, and then have a look over here. We've got photos combined with the different text descriptions here as well. So it's all about trying to use different types of media to really communicate our data. So I'll show a couple of uh, quick demos of how we can kind of get this experience um, in Power BI.
So we'll have a look at the branding aspect, uh, the design tips. So try to align your reports with your corporate brand to promote that trust and familiarity. Um, but also we'll, we'll have a look at adding images to reports because I think this is super cool. You could do it for lots of different applications, not just environmental data. Um, so I'm just going to head over to Power BI now. We've got a quick demo here. Um, and this is an example uh, report um, which shows a healthy waterway scorecard. So it's presenting information on how healthy our waterways are looking now and into the future. And you can see at the moment, uh, we've got lots of visuals here, um, but they're almost uh, kind of floating in space. They're not really framed. Uh, our eyes don't know exactly where to look first. Um, and that's where my first design tip is to try to think about how you can frame your Power BI reports to really make those key, the key data stand out. And you can do that by using Power BI backgrounds. Um, so if we have a look here, I'll just open up uh, my folder. See this one. If we have a look here, you can see I've got a PNG image, um, which is just um, a background. I've created this uh, using PowerPoint. It can be as simple as that, just layering lots of different shapes together, um, but really to try to create that frame for my report. So in Power BI, we can bring backgrounds in um, by making sure you have no visuals on the page selected, go into the um, Format Your Report page uh, settings, and under Canvas Background, uh, we can browse to an image. Let's paste in the link. And then we can fit that to our report page. Um, so you can see just what a difference that makes. If I, oh yeah, you can't really turn it off. If you remove it and um, and show it again, then you can kind of see it really does frame these visuals. So we just need a little bit of extra formatting here on these titles, um, just to make sure that the color contrast is right. Um, but there you go. You can see just what a difference having a background uh, makes, especially one which is aligned to your corporate brand. Um, but the second technique I want to point out here is one of my favorite things to do. Uh, try to think of how you can add images or icons um, to really uh, communicate your data very quickly. And we've got a couple of places here where we can add them. So the first one I want to take a look at are these two matrices. And this presents our um, healthy waterway scorecard. So we've got different categories here. And what we can do is we've got um, different uh, uh, images or different icons for these um, different categories. Uh, we've hosted the icons online and they've just, um, they're bringing in the image URL into Power BI. Um, but we can bring this into our visuals here. You can see I've added it as a new column in the matrix. Um, and it just makes a big difference in being able to very quickly communicate what these key um, uh, kind of receptors are at a glance. Um, we could do the same thing up here. Here we've got a chiclet slicer, which is a custom visual. Uh, chiclet slicers are awesome because you can combine uh, the text, what you want to slice on with images. So I'm just dragging in uh, some more icons here. Oh, wrong one. Into the image bucket. And we can see it just adds a bit more color, but also at a glance, we can see what we want to slice on. And again, down the bottom here, we've got um, some information about these different um, environmental receptors or, or values that we want to uh, try and protect. Um, and we're using another custom visual. This time it's the card browser. And this is what we used on the uh, Vicwater grid example to show those different environmental receptors. It's a really great way of combining uh, text with a really nice image and creating this kind of browse experience. So again, we've just got um, an image here. We can drag it into the visual. And it really goes a long way to try to uh, paint that picture of what these ecosystems are um, that we're trying to protect. So that was um, just a first uh, a quick demo into having a look at branding and also how we can uh, add images. Were there any questions at this stage? I'm having a look at the chat. No questions there, but does anyone have any um, any questions about that before we move on? Phil, all good? 
Perfect. Um, so the second example I want to take us through today is having a look at the Gippsland Urban Water Strategy. So this is Gipps Gippsland Water's Urban Water Strategy. Um, this is a really interesting study uh, because while they're a regional water corporation, they've got 24 different water and sewer systems. And these are very quite technical and complicated uh, systems that they wanted to uh, communicate again to the general public. Uh, and they wanted to do this by using a lot of maps, images, infographics, and text. And we need to design for both the technical and the non-technical audiences. So this is um, the purpose of this dashboard is to communicate Gippsland Water's 50-year plan to secure water resources across their region. So let's go take a look um, at what the report looks like. And again, I'll point out different Power BI design tips and tricks. It's this one here. I'll just copy this into the chat in case anyone is keen to click along with me. Um, and you can see uh, that it's this time it's not um, five individual Power BI reports, um, but we've got lots of different uh, pages or sub themes to this report here, um, which the user can navigate through. So here we're just using um, uh, buttons, uh, with um, uh, action to take you through to different pages. And you can see again, if we click on this one, um, we're trying to use very consistent uh, kind of themes and layouts uh, to align with Gippsland Water's uh, corporate uh, brand guide. Um, but really here, the hero visuals uh, for this report is probably um, the detailed map. So this map allows us to select a water system. Uh, we can uh, click on different aspects. We can see that we've got custom uh, uh, spatial files here. So we're, we're combining um, polygons, lines, and points uh, using icons to really show some quite uh, technical information about uh, what the key aspects are of the water supply system. Um, and this is using icon map. So we'll do a quick, I'll do a quick demo into icon map uh, to show you how you can get started creating uh, really kind of almost infographic style maps. Um, and uh, to the right hand side here, you can see we've got some dynamic text, which updates when we select different areas of interest. And again, we're using the card browser here to show what these water systems look like. So just thinking about all the different types of visuals you can combine to really paint that picture of what these systems look like. If we have a look at um, this button here, we can learn more about the water treatment processes. And again, this is where using uh, infographics can really go a long way to uh, communicating your data to non-technical audiences. You can see here pretty technical uh, kind of workflow of all of the different steps in the treatment process. Um, but the end user can unpack it by clicking on these different icons here to learn a little bit more about the step. Um, so this isn't really your traditional Power BI report in the sense that um, we're, we're not really presenting uh, kind of charts and metrics and things like that. We've got a lot of text here. What we're doing here is making almost like an interactive uh, written report. So it's a different way of presenting information so that end users can uh, click through and uh, get to that key info at a glance as well. Um, and also it's thinking about ways of presenting uh, different information uh, in a way that makes sense to your end users. Um, so here we've got an example of a custom uh, uh, chart created using the Deneb custom visual, which allows users to dynamically uh, toggle on and off um, different uh, uh, water outlook uh, charts as well. So there's lots of different uh, design kind of tips and techniques in this report that we could go through. Um, but one which I will uh, kind of point out is thinking about the visuals. So try to select the appropriate visual for your data set. Um, and in this case, our hero visual really for this report is icon map. So we'll go into um, a bit of a demo for that. Uh, but also think about navigation. Um, to really kind of bring your data to life, you have to take your users on a, on a logical journey 
Um, and using bookmarks and buttons can go a long way to helping your end users navigate through your reports. And again, think about how you could use potentially infographics um, to design for those non-technical audiences. Um, so I know we're presenting Enviro data here, but you could have infographic flow charts for um, uh, maybe workflows. Um, there's lots of different applications for them. So let's go and have a quick demo. We'll have a look at Icon Map, which is one of my favorite uh, custom visuals in Power BI. Um, so here we've got a, again, this is all of the demos are using um, synthetic data. So don't look at the data for the demos, just have a look at the techniques that I'm presenting. Um, but here we've got a example Power BI report, which shows different Victorian water resources. Um, they're separated into things like forests, lakes, reservoirs, but also uh, boundaries such as water corporations um, and also waterways. So at the moment, we've got the standard, the default Bing map in Power BI. And this allows us to plot uh, points on a map, which is great. Um, but for our use case here, we really want to show uh, points, uh, lines and polygons all on a, uh, the same map. Um, so we can do a little bit better than that. Uh, and that's using the Icon Map Custom Visual. So Icon Map Custom Visual, um, you can add from the uh, Get More Visuals from App Source uh, to get the latest version. So I'm going to convert this map across to Icon Map. And we just have to rearrange some of these fields here. I'm going to drag latitude into latitude, longitude into longitude. Uh, make sure that it's aggregating correctly. I'm just going to do the average. And Icon Map has um, two key fields that it requires to render. So we need category. You can see it says required and also the size. So I'm going to bring my index into category and can go into size as well. And you can see that um, uh, we've ended up with something very similar to the Bing point map here. Um, so we're not doing too much better just yet. Um, but what gives Icon Map its name is the ability to display icons. So let's take a look at that um, first. So we can um, uh, improve our map uh, over the Bing map just by simply bringing icons in. So here I've got a measure, a DAX measure, um, which is just using a switch true statement uh, to assign an image URL uh, to different asset types. So for reservoir, we have this image URL. If it's a forest, I want to return this image URL and so on. So we can um, add this into our icon uh, map custom visual by clicking on the format your visual under objects. We've got this option here for image slash WKT. And we'll go over WKT in a minute. Um, so we can just focus on the image for now. Uh, we can make this property dynamic using conditional formatting. So we can tie it to a DAX measure. And it's just searching for that measure. So I've called this one image. And what this does is it just reads in that um, uh, image URL. You can see it's been added here. They're quite small. So we make the size a bit bigger, maybe 30. So it stands out. Well, it's a bit big, maybe 25. Um, and you can see that we've got um, now instead of points, we can see at a glance um, uh, different uh, icons for our reservoirs, forests, wetlands, and so on. Um, so this could go a long way to uh, even if you just had a simple point map, um, if you wanted to improve it, uh, just make it a little bit more interesting by adding icons to symbolize your data. Um, but for us, we don't just have points we want to represent, we have uh, polygons as well. So if we have a look at our data behind the scenes here, um, here you can see we've got water corporations, for example, and waterways, which we're, we've imported data as um, WKT. So WKT stands for well-known text, and it's really just a combination of our um, latitude and longitude um, uh, point combinations to represent a polygon. So you could imagine a shape, series of lots of little vertices, and uh, WKT just converts um, your spatial file into text format. And this is great because we can import it into Power BI. 
and we can render this in the icon map custom visual. So I've modified that uh, DAX measure slightly here um, to say if if we're returning, if our feature is any one of these types, then return our image. Otherwise, return uh, our WKT, so the data from that column. And if we have a look back again at the icon map, custom visual under um, objects, uh, the image WKT allows us to read in both the image URL or the WKT for formatting. So we can edit our custom, our conditional formatting here. And this time we want to read in our map icon and WKT field. So you can see that when we read this in, um, then we can see custom uh, outlines, um, custom polygons for our different water corporations, as well as uh, the points, um, which represent our point location data with those icons. And we could do a lot of different formatting things. I won't go into it too much uh, here. Um, I could spend hours on icon map, um, but just quickly, we can format things like the um, uh, the map fill color, and um, we can make this all dynamic. It could be data driven if we wanted. Um, we can format the border color as well. Yeah. Um, and there's a lot of other aspects you can do. You could bring in your own custom base map here, which shows additional context um, uh, for your reports. Um, we could make the base maps time varying. There's so much you could do with icon map if you've got spatial data. Um, so definitely worth exploring if this, um, if you do work um, in an industry which uses a lot of spatial data. Um, but even if you're just presenting, you want to present a really nice map on your report to make it stand out, uh, using icons can go a long way um, to improving your map. Uh, so I do see we have a question in um, the chat. It's from Gary. Thanks so much, Gary. Uh, did you start these projects from the report UI requirements and then build the backend data model based on the visual needs? Seems like there would be very specific data needs for these great reports. Oh, thank you. Um, yeah, these are these ones are kind of interesting studies. I guess if you're designing Power BI reports for public facing audiences, uh, then the visual requirements, they do um, sometimes outweigh uh, the, the kind of uh, data requirements. And by that, I mean that um, if you are creating a Power BI report for internal use, you want to think about how easy is it to update and maintain and scale. And you might not go into too much of the design features then because um, if you've worked with Power BI a little bit, you know they can be a little bit cumbersome and clunky to update and maintain. Um, but because these are public facing reports, um, then the design requirements um, were a lot more important um, than creating a really simple to use Power BI report. Uh, so yeah, we did, um, for those studies, we're working with uh, the end users. Um, so people who technically know a lot about their Enviro data, um, but maybe not so much about Power BI. Uh, so we co-designed the project and it was really visual driven. So we'd start with some mock-ups and then we'd um, start with a subset of info. We'd quickly bring the info into Power BI and uh, model it and create the visuals. And then we'd tweak it. It was really definitely visual driven. Uh, so it is kind of the reverse of a typical <coughs> Power BI study where you would start with the data sets um, and build the data model and then build the visuals off the top. Um, but yeah, it really depends on what the end requirements are. Oh, cool, thanks, Mark. <laughs> nice work. Um, yeah, yeah, it is a slightly different type of um, uh, Power BI study, but really, um, really interesting and really um, exciting to push the Power BI kind of visuals uh, to the limit. Um, so the next study I wanted to chat through um, was a very kind of similar study to the Gippsland Water one, um, but this time we're working with the Greater Melbourne Urban Water uh, kind of systems to present their 50-year strategy. So it's called the Water for Life strategy. 
And really very similar objective was to communicate the 50 year strategy to a wide range of audiences. So again, both technical and non-technical. Um, but this time it was really uh, focused um, less so on the mapping. We still had some really cool uh, maps within this report, um, but more about clever ways of trying to um, include a lot of uh, text information with images um, and kind of videos and things like that uh, to allow the end users to navigate through the sections of this quite lengthy and detailed uh, strategy um, in an online kind of format. So this complemented a PDF report um, and really it was about presenting more kind of accessible info uh, for people. Um, and the key uh, design tip that I wanted to kind of point out in this report, um, again, we're using navigation um, and linking out to lots of different uh, other reports, but really the instructional videos. So think about how you could use videos within your reports to really um, either highlight your data, provide additional context, um, or in this case, provide a bit of an overview and a navigation instructional prompt. So let's take a look at this dashboard. I think I've got it in. I will go to it from here. I'll just copy this link into the chat if anyone is keen to click along. So I'll make it full screen here. Um, so again, you can see very similar techniques. We're thinking about corporate branding. We've got a nice background. We're using a lot of icons here um, and uh, consistent colors and everything like that. Um, but if we click through to any of the pages, uh, when you first launch the page, uh, we've got these short videos. So these are almost like executive summary style videos, which provide an overview of the key messages on the page, um, but also act as a double to show you and new users how to navigate through the report. Um, because as we'll see in a minute, we've got a lot of information which we're including in this Power BI report. Uh, we've got different themes down the left hand uh, pane. So we have seven themes and, and within each theme, we've got these sub themes here, which we're navigating through using buttons and bookmarks. And within some of the sub themes, we have extra interactive content here, which users can click through um, to really just unpack the components of the report that they're interested in. So that's where having things like uh, navigation using videos um, becomes really powerful uh, in Power BI. Um, so I'll go through a quick demo showing how you can embed videos into your reports. Um, so one thing you'll notice is if we click back to a different page and then click on that page again, um, it doesn't uh, show the navigation video um, again. So it's just configured using uh, bookmarks to present it on loading um, and then users can access it again here. Um, so again, we've got uh, icon map here to present um, different uh, key features of this water system. We can click through with the slices just to see the components that we're interested in. Um, and there's a lot of extra information here. We've got infographics that users can uh, zoom in on, um, some charts as well, but really it is a factual and kind of um, an example of using Power BI to communicate a lot of uh, interactive text-based information. Um, but if we take a look at a quick demo of showing how we can bring videos into Power BI, um, I'll show another use case uh, for it as well. Um, not just instructions, we can really use videos to highlight and show the information uh, that we're presenting in a bit more of a, um, Kind of like adding emotional context to your data. So seeing a video can really bring, go a long way to bringing your data to life. Um, so if we have a look at our uh, kind of elements here, uh, let me choose a reservoir, which um, oh, I think Melton Reservoir. This is a really good one to have a look at a video for. Um, here, if I just select this one, I've got some buttons and bookmarks uh, to show and hide different um, visuals. So if we um, wanted to see a video of what does Melton Reservoir look like? Um, this is where we can use again another custom visual. Uh, it's called the HTML content. So HTML content is, um, it's a great visual. It just allows us to 
um, to render HTML content in Power BI, basically. So just like it sounds. So here, I'll just bring the visual onto the screen. Um, and it really has, it has two different um, uh, fields that uh, we can add in, um, but really all we need for this is our, our video link um, in some HTML tags. So if I drag this in here, I'll show you what this looks like in a minute. Um, but it's really as simple as that. If you have your video formatted uh, correctly in HTML, um, then we can now play it in Power BI and we can just see just what does Melton Reservoir look like. So you can see now uh, this was, video was taken at the end of um, a very hot, dry summer. You can see just how kind of red <laughs> dirt and barren it is at uh, that part of, um, of Victoria. Um, so I'll just group this one in here and we can just um, take a look at another reservoir just to show the contrast. So I think um, Thompson Reservoir. Oh, what's going on here? Oh, I think I converted my um, uh, 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 visual is this? I think I converted icon map into a will this work? Average, average. Yeah, cool. All right, we lost our icons. I converted icon map into HTML. Um, but here, if we um, uh, have a look at this reservoir here, this is Thompson Reservoir. You can see just what a difference it is. So uh, really including videos can go a long way to creating that emotional connection with your data. So it doesn't just have to be videos about your data, uh, but it could be videos um, like we showed before uh, as an overview on how to navigate through or a video discussing what the key um, uh, the key kind of story is you want to share about your data as well. And embedding them in Power BI, we'll just have a look at the video links here. So here we've got, um, just for the reservoirs, we've got the uh, HTML uh, link. So you can see it um, needs a little bit of tweaking with the HTML uh, source code. Uh, we're hosting these videos on Vimeo. Um, but you could host it on something like Azure Blob as well. Uh, you just need that source link um, and formatting it with a little bit of formatting for HTML. If anyone is keen on uh, trying this out, we, I do have a blog post up on Discovery AI about um, uh, embedding videos in Power BI. So you can go check that out and we've got the sample code as well. Uh, were there any questions about uh, this example that I shared or anyone using videos um, in Power BI? Still not yet, maybe later. <laughs> um, cool, so the lucky last um, example uh, is a study we've recently worked on um, with CSIRO uh, to uh, really present results um, of their social and economic long-term monitoring program survey data to a wide range of technical and non-technical audiences. So again, being a public facing uh, report, really um, interested in presenting the information in a clear way that uh, people know how to navigate through the report um, and they know how to explore and understand. Um, so very similar design tips this time. Think about branding, so align your reports with your corporate brand. Um, this time I'm going to do a quick demo about navigation. So think about how you can make your navigation a little bit more intuitive and I'll show you how you can use the bookmark navigator to do this now. This is really cool. Um, but also think about customization. So you really want to present your data in a way that is familiar to the end users. Um, and I'll show you how we did that on this project um, by using a custom visual called Deneb. So if we go and we find that one, one is here. I'll just copy this link into the chat if anyone is following along. And again, very similar techniques here with the background and the buttons. Um, and if we click through um, to one of the pages here, you can see we're presenting um, survey data uh, results um, for a lot of different questions here. So we can filter, we can click on these um, uh, different buttons at the top here, and it brings up the results of different surveys. 
And we're getting this experience here using um, not uh, seven or eight different uh, buttons and bookmarks uh, like we had to previously do in Power BI. Uh, we've got a neat new visual called the Bookmark Navigator, which allows us to dynamically um, show and hide, uh, uh, it allows us to dynamically read in these bookmarks as well. Um, and we're also using here slices, we can filter down the results um, and across all the different pages here, think about consistent navigation. So we've got the uh, sync slices turned on. So these slicer selections are synced between all of the different pages. Um, and just one more feature I'll point out before we do a quick little demo and wrap up um, is think about uh, if you need to customize your visual experience um, for the data. So um, this is an example here of what's known as a Likert chart. Um, so it's for presenting information um, really to show kind of the sentiment results of surveys. And this uh, representation here, this makes sense to this data. This is what the end users are used to seeing, uh, but it wasn't possible in any of the uh, Power BI visuals out of the box or even the existing custom visuals. Um, so for this example here, we've used um, a custom visual called Deneb, uh, which allows you to write your own essentially custom visual using our Vega Lite code. Um, so if anyone is keen on getting like really kind of uh, customizing your visual experience in Power BI, uh, definitely investigate looking at Deneb. Um, so it's created by Daniel Marsh Patrick. We're very lucky at Discovery I works with us a couple of days a week. Um, so uh, he does a lot of Deneb work, um, but there's heaps of tutorials out there if anyone is keen. So if we have a look just very quickly at the last example um, of thinking about how you can make your navigation a bit more intuitive uh, in your reports using kind of buttons and bookmarks. Uh, this report here, um, we've got the kind of old style way of navigating through. This is what we had to do previously before the bookmark navigator. So I've got um, a visual here, um, my supply and demand trends, but what if I wanted to see um, just a forecast of how is our water balance trending. So we've got limited space on our canvas, but we want to toggle between two different visuals here. Uh, previously, we had to have two different buttons. Here we've got two different buttons. Um, and each of these buttons is assigned to a different bookmark here to show and hide specific visuals. Um, but now what we can do is, this is one of my favorite new kind of newish, <laughs> maybe it's six months old, uh, visuals in Power BI. It's the navigator. We could do a page navigator, which inserts um, kind of a navigation pane for all, all your pages in your report, or you could do bookmark navigator. And bookmark navigator here, what it does is it links, I um, mean, it inserts a different uh, kind of uh, button here um, for all of your bookmarks in your report. Uh, but you can see that I've, I'm using my bookmarks. I've got three different groups here. Um, under this visual, I just want to show those two uh, bookmarks which relate to the time series uh, chart. So here we can do a little bit of formatting. Instead of going all, we can just select our time series. Um, and here we go, if we just put this on top here, um, we can see that we can toggle between those two different charts. Um, so a couple of things to keep in mind then. Uh, what we'd want to do is name our bookmarks using plain English names. Uh, rather than um, uh, kind of easy, uh, nicely formatted data names. Um, and we can rearrange um, the order. It's very simple. You could add a new bookmark in and the navigator just expands. So it means that configuring uh, dynamic navigation using uh, bookmarks and buttons is so much easier in Power BI now. Um, we could even change the shape like what we had on the um, uh, water for life strategy. We could make it maybe a chevron arrow if you want things to be selected in a specific uh, kind of order. There's a lot of different shapes here um, and lots of different customizations you can make for on hover and selected and things like that. Um, so definitely worth exploring uh, the bookmark navigators.
Um, so just to wrap up, uh, there's a ton of ways to bring your data to life. So some things uh, which we've gone through, just think about branding, selecting the right visuals, providing instructions, intuitive navigation, icons and images, accessible design, dynamic text, tool tips, infographics, buttons and bookmarks, custom visuals, and ways to tell your data story. Um, so there's tons more things you can do. It really depends on your data. Um, but if you uh, wanted to kind of continue learning and exploring this, um, you can head across to the Power BI Data Stories Gallery for um, then explore lots of their examples. That's a great place for inspiration. Um, there's a ton of tools and templates out there. Um, PowerBI.tips is one of my favorite websites to go to. They've got the theme generator and lots of kind of free backgrounds and starter packs as well. Um, learn from the community. So the Power BI and Power Platform community is just buzzing with experts. Um, people I like to follow in the design community are Reed Havens, Miguel Myers, Chris Hamill, Mike Carlo and Seth. Um, and Discovery I, we do post a bit about uh, design, especially in bio data. Um, but just really, I'd encourage everyone to practice. So there's a ton of communities out there if you wanted to get involved in any of the data challenges. Um, I know uh, Workout Wednesdays is a great one um, that does a lot. Um, but yeah, definitely, if anyone's keen, we I also run Power BI for Enviro's Meetup as well, um, monthly meetup. You can come along and explore more about Enviro data. Um, but yeah, no, just wanted to say thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in. Um, I think we've just got a minute or two before the next session. <laughs> but if there were any quick questions. Thanks, Alex. Uh, I don't think we're going to have time for questions because no. we've got to get a couple of minutes uh, before the next sessions. But please do connect with Alex. Uh, yeah, great stuff. It's great to see the art of the possible with all these parties. Thanks for the link. Uh, I want some of those now in my organization. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I will connect. I sent you a connection. Uh, yeah, really good stuff. Beautiful. And uh, yeah, thanks. Awesome. Oh, thank you so much, Eric. Um, and thanks everyone for tuning in. <laughs>